Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me again this afternoon. I am doing Daily Art Adventure number 562, Read It and Weep. <laughs> All ye who... For something, enter here. <laughs> I think that's on the gates of Dante's Inferno, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, none of that, none of that. <laughs> This isn't nearly that serious, <laughs> just in case you wondered. <laughs> 562, <laughs> finishing touches, all right. <laughs> all right, so let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm downstairs in my normal painting studio, and I have four paintings that I know what I'm going to do, and a couple more that I don't. So this is just sort of a batting cleanup kind of day. Let's start with this one right here. This is a painting that I did uh, for what? Four days, Thursday, Thursday night, and today's Monday. <laughs> I still have to count on my fingers. <laughs> the reason that's funny to me is I remember my mom rebuking me <laughs> sternly as a child saying, Dan, you don't have to count on your fingers. <laughs> Here I am, 65 years old, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Some things never change. Okay, so I did this four days ago. Um, and I'm actually quite, quite happy with it. Um, it's a 40 by 60 inch painting that I did in three hours. And I posted this on Facebook and did the math. That's 13.3 square inches <laughs> per minute. <laughs> Of course, not that, not that I painted it that way, but 2,400 square inches in 180 minutes. So that's, that's pretty good. It's a painting of a gymnasium with inflatable, bouncy toy things in it and a bunch of middle school kids. So um, you can go back and watch me paint this. So here I am. There's very little that I need to do to this painting, uh, which is a nice place to be. Um, there's one mark up here. A little bit too much pencil, and and I want this rafter. As you can tell, I'm as you can tell, I'm being very abstract in much of this painting. Uh, the most realism is right here where the most light is. Then it goes very quickly to dark and soft edges. Um, but besides those little things, now that I'm standing here with fresh eyes, so to speak, and looking at it, I realize, oh wait a minute. I can really, I can really improve, make, make very quick improvements. You guys don't usually see me do this part because it's rather noisy, but I can, I can make some distinct improvements to this painting right now by applying some transparent glazes. So here we go. Let's this is called aeroba painting. <laughs> you do it hard enough, you get an aerobics workout. For long enough, of course. Of course, you have to do it for 20 minutes. <laughs> Which I'm not going to do. But I do nonetheless get myself breathing. So if you combine that with the 10 times so far today that I've run upstairs to my studio, see? I do have opinions about things like this. <laughs> I once heard a doctor, he was talking about, you know, you've heard that if you take the stairs instead of the elevator, um, you'll, you know, you'll get some exercise and some expert on, on a podcast somewhere was poo-pooing such a notion. 
I'm sure he said those were exact words, poo-poo. He said poo-poo. <laughs> um, he was poo-pooing the notion that you get, he said, you know, yeah, that's not nearly enough exercise. Well, I beg to differ. I know you tuned, tuned in to my, I know that you tuned in to my channel to hear my viewpoints on exercise and physical fitness, but you're going to get it anyway if you're still listening. And that is, I think the doctor was completely wrong. Here's why. Because if you're the kind of person who will run up the stairs instead of taking the elevator for anywhere from one to ten floors, if you're the kind of person that will do that, then you're also the kind of person that will do a hundred, no, let's be reasonable, a dozen other things throughout the day uh, to get exercise. Get it? So it is the profile. It's the kind of person who will take the stairs instead of the elevator, who will do, all like me, frankly, who will do all kinds of other things. And the older you get, the more important those all kinds of other things become. Anyway, there you go. So go ahead, indulge yourself in some aeroba painting. <laughs> there. Okay, now the painting just got slightly better throughout the entire thing. Not done yet. Um, done with those brushes. Let me see. I'm going to save those. And break out some other brushes. Slightly smaller, perhaps. To do some glazes in blue. Tiny bit of phthalo. So there you go. Be, don't, ignore that expert who says it doesn't do you any good and be the kind of person who does all kinds of little things throughout the day including healthier eating and more exercise what gives me the right to say such things well I'm old and not to brag but I just got rated as I just got rated by life insurance company as elite preferred my agent said he'd only had one other client in his entire career that rated. So I'm very thankful for that. Mostly a gift, I guarantee you. Mostly everything good that I have is by the grace of God. There you go. You want to know the truth. So now I'm just taking the opportunity to push some of my values. Now, I'm only pushing them in one way, of course, at the moment. That is darker. But in just a minute, as you know, uh, I'm going to pick up a rag and lift out some areas to make them lighter. And then I will have, in fact, expanded my, or intensified is maybe a better word. I will have intensified the value range of this painting. And that's almost always a good thing. I don't know if you caught that or not. That was, that was a good word. A, uh, a painting with a wide range of tonal values will beat out a painting with a narrow range of tonal values almost every time. I mean, other things being equal. <laughs> But uh, given the choice, you should, you should want your painting to have a more intense tonal or values contrast. So that's what I'm doing. I'm intensifying the tonal range, using the word tonal there in, in reference to uh, lightness and darkness. Darkening these corners, each of the corners, a little bit more. They were already dark. I just made them slightly darker. And I think that's good enough. I'll save these brushes, too, because I think I'll be doing some of the same stuff to the other three or four paintings I'm working on today. So this is just, hopefully, real quick here today. Just four paintings. One, two, three, four, or five, four paintings real quickly. So now... 
rag. Go back to my highlight bits, my brightest spots, and, and bring them back to brightness, lightness. Negative painting or painting in reverse is wonderful because you have extreme control. You know, how hard I push, how long I rub is, is high degree of control. So I have extreme control without slipping into the errors, mistakes, foibles that, are us that usually accompany uh, extreme degrees of control. Does that make sense? So when you paint in this manner, you get to exercise. Now, it's not details, but it's extreme control of values. So you get to, you get to be a control freak <laughs> without the downside of being a control freak. That's what happens when you, when you do a liftoff painting, reverse, negative painting, taking, taking pigment off the canvas. That is wonderful. Okay, now there's just a couple details, one that I know of. Maybe others will come to mind. I don't want to get carried away, though. I like the painting. I don't want to start fiddling. Let me lower this thing down a little bit. There's one girder up here in the sky. I think I'll leave the sky up here in the ceiling. That I felt like would be improved. Plus, there's a little bit too much pencil mark right there. So with the same stroke, I'm accentuating a girder. You know, this all the steel stuff. It's like spaghetti up there in the, in the seal. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't try terribly hard to accurately render. I mean, you know, it's got crisscross, it's got verticals. I tried, I, I, I want the, for instance, the students who say, or the and the teachers who attend this school to look at this painting and in a, in a moment say, yep, that's our gym ceiling. That's the ceiling in our gym. That's exactly what it looks like. Even though, of course, it's not exactly what it looks like, right? That would be a terrible mistake to make it exactly. So I'm doing, as I suspected, several rafters here where the, close, where the light is hitting these girders. I keep saying rafters, girders. Certainly be a better word. <sighs> now, I'm going to go up again. If, honestly, there's not much I want to do to this painting. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So that means I, you know, go light, go gentle. I have more danger of, of ruining it or going in reverse than I am going forward. One more little light bit right here. And again, a little bit of light right here. All right. Oh, I didn't, I did everything but sign it. So forgive me. And I will not give you, you some of you, you've heard my I just did my signature tirade <laughs> last uh, Wednesday, so I will not repeat that here. You can go back to last Wednesday. I have it. I have it marked. But I will. Whoops! I will do my signature. Whoops! What am I? What am I hitting up here? Good enough. I'll leave it there. Okay. What color? This would actually be a good painting. Believe it or not to do my signature in red. So yeah, let's mix up some nice, fairly bright red here. Oh, I can't help myself. Okay, so you guys, so here's part of my signature tirade. Placement, not down here, somewhere where it's comfortable. Oops, it's not bright enough, light enough. Um, no initials, unless, unless your friends know you as BJ. If your name in the world is BJ Smith, then go ahead and sign it BJ Smith. But if everybody calls you Bobby, you sign it Bobby. 
No initials. The initials is Bush League. Initials communicates to the viewer, amateur. So your name, not your initials. Some of you, your name is rather long, so you're going to have to work on how to figure out how to get it, write it in a small space. Number two, make it legible. Related to that, real close to that, is you must buy, do not pass go, do not collect $200, do not chimp out, do not wimp out. Just buy a Winsor Newton Series 7 brush. A number one, or this is a number two. Okay, you can't do a signature with a bristle brush. You can't do a good signature with a bristle brush. I called this the other day when I was teaching the art class down in Southport on Wednesday, and I was teaching about how to do signatures. I called this the, your, the Disneyvacation. <laughs> disnification of of your signature that it's your real signature but cleaned up disneyfied a little bit disney probably has the most famous signature in america and you know that that wasn't what he signed on his checks but it was derivative is derived from what he signed on his checks and that's what this is in my case this is really my signature but it's cleaned up as i said disneyfied because I want people to read it. When my paintings show up at, at um, Antiques Roadshow in 100 years, the expert will not be scrunching his nose and putting his glasses up to say, well, I'm not sure who did this. Of course, no, neither will the people bring it in. You know, oh, this is a painting by Dan Nelson, blah, blah, blah. There will be no mystery. Okay, so that was pretty minor, pretty fun. Didn't take much time and is a distinct improvement on that painting. So pardon me a moment while I get it out of my way. I'm gonna take these paintings in order of uh, small, small, small modifications to large. In other words, I'm gonna knock out the ones that are very simple. This one, this painting, I did um, also, in my painting class in Southport last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's a demo, class demo, and I'm quite happy with it. I'm just going to make a few changes. Well, no, 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 changes, additions. Very few, very slight. First of all, I already have these brushes ready to go. Once again, oh, I forgot to tell you last time that the, the, the brown that I was doing on that big painting was oxide red. For those of you who follow me on a regular basis, no surprise there. That's, that's my most common by far. Oxide red is a lot like burnt sienna, an orange-ish brown. Very nice, very rich brown, orange brown, called oxide red. But don't think of it as red, think of it as a brown. So I'm doing the same thing here, just warming it up. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so the, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go up into the sky with this color, but I will, and then I'll show you why. So I'm, right now, I just made the entire sky browner than it was. And it's not bad, but it's just browner, slightly browner than I would like. So hold your horses, if you happen to have any horses that need holding. <laughs> um, clean these, these are the brushes that, that I used second on that other painting. They have blue on them, kind of a dirty blue, so I'm wiping them off a little bit. More liquid and then a tiny bit of phthalo blue. Okay, and then, so why did I do it brown first and phthalo second? A lot of words to say that. Um, first of all, of course, a little bit of the brown is still up here. So I have one more unified canvas. That would be one way to describe it. And I'm going to go straight to my rag already. And lighten up the sky again. Down in the sky close to the horizon. Lighten up my focal point right here. 
lighting up my window in the distant hill. And this area down here. Okay, and the roof. <laughs> I keep finding, okay, there we go. So that just, how long have I been working on this painting? Four minutes, and it's distinctly better already. Better painting in four minutes, just by glazing. Some of you who don't understand transparent painting should be taking note of that. Now, after I finished, I saw a couple things that I think I would like to do. One is I have like a little stump or fence post or something sticking up right in the middle of this barnyard. And it dawned on me just, just after I was finished, first I'm going to extend it up just a little tiny bit with dark, see? And I think I'll keep that brush for future also. And then I'm going to mix up a batch of warm orange. And I'm thinking if the sun, if I were to indicate some of this light hitting just the top of this fence post. And maybe, let me pick up a palette knife now. I want a small one. There we go. And maybe just a sliver of that warm light. There we go. A little bit too neat. Let's mess it up just a little bit. One nice thing about messing up things like that, if then if you overdo it, it's easy to come back and pull it back just a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Do you see that? Just a little subtle detail. Makes a big difference. And that's all that's all I was aware of on this painting that I wanted to do. Although, <laughs> I did wonder about um, accentuating this shadow and light down here. So I'm going to do that by first of all accentuating the shadow, in other words, darkening the shadow down here. As if, as if it's a shadow of this big, big, gnarly, very unusual shaped tree. All right, that's good enough. And then... I still have this warm yellow orange on my brush. I want it more yellow, less orange. And I want to kill the color a little bit, so I'm going to my favorite color killer, which is raw umber. Okay, and then just a few bits of light, not hard edges, soft edges down here on the on the road, the path. If you by any chance watched us paint this last week, you'll realize that this this the path is completely uh, fictitious in the photograph. There was no no indication whatsoever of a path in going into the scene, but we decided that it would be a a good addition to the composition to break up this bottom line. Now I'm just scumbling in some light stuff. And remember, scumbling is a dangerous texture. It's not, it's not often not a very pleasant final uh, texture. So you have to use it in a very limited manner, mostly by coming back and just doing a little bit of real painting on top of it. And that's too much. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. That's all I'm gonna do. If I'm gonna do any more to this painting, it's going to be after I've looked at it even more. Now, wait a minute, as soon as I say that, I go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> as soon as I say that, I'm gonna change my mind. Only slightly though. And that is after having um, darkened the whole canvas and then lifted out here with a rag I realize I can actually afford to push this light just a tiny bit more. All right, I think that's all. All right, yay, two paintings down. Those are the easy ones. What's next here today? 
Ah, okay. A little bit more complicated, this one. This is a painting I did a couple of months ago, part of my traffic series that I'm still excited about, but I haven't done any other than, anyway, other than the big one in the garage, it could be construed as a traffic painting. Let's raise this up. This is one of those paintings that I took to my monthly painters group. And uh, I thought I was mostly done, but uh, they came up with several things. One, and this is, this is one of those, it was one of those irritating moments, this area up here. But it was, I'm glad that I did it. So this is a, like a telephone pole. Oh yeah, I need to skinny that pole up. So that was one of the things I realized. And, and this is an arm that goes out here and holds the street light, right? Whoa, got it? But when I showed this to my friends, some of them, now this is a little hard to believe, a little bit of a stretch, but I'll tell you anyway, some of them thought this was a moon and that this was a part of the architecture. And they, they thought this was, they thought it was a, a gable on the front of this building that I had drawn terribly wrong and they couldn't figure out what this was. It took us quite a, took me quite a while to figure out what are you talking about? Because this is actually a panel of a single plane, like a roof slanting away from the street up there. See, and it's not drawn poorly, but this dark mark right here confused them. They, anyway, irritating. I, part of me feels like, oh, come on, you should have been able to see. In other words, they were, they were suspecting me of making, which I don't mind this, <laughs> but they were looking at this and thinking I had made a gross drawing error. A little irritating, but that's what they're friends. That's what friends are for. But what that did show me is like, oh my goodness. After I saw what they were seeing, I said, oh, okay, I guess somebody could see that. So um, I, I need to fix that drawing a little bit but before I do that guess what I'm gonna do just I just take one flying leap <laughs> what do you think well actually what I'm gonna do right now is clean up my palette just a second hang on scraping off with a razor and I need a clean place to mix mix paint on my palette so hang on okay so what am I gonna do yes I'm gonna do some glazes Almost always, unless, 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 unless the paint, the painting, unless the painting is already distinctly too dark, except for that, yes, then every painting I retouch, I will put glazes on it. So here we go. Very faint, very pale, granted, not done yet either. Um, oh, I, when I was glazing the last painting and I did, I did brown in the sky first and then came back and did blue. And I said, one of the reasons is that it helps maintain a unified palette. That's one reason. The other is when you're doing painting in the world of transparent or translucent color, okay, transparent, translucent, you will pick people, plug your ears, you don't necessarily apply to you. But when you're in the realm of painting in layers of transparent and translucent, Jumping over the color temperature barrier produces charming effects. That is, this, paint, this part of the painting was slightly cool. I've just warmed up. If I now come back and do blue cool on top of that, it produces a charming effect. Uh, so that sky that I did a while ago, it was cool, then I warmed it. That makes it interesting. Then I cooled it again. Makes it interesting again. The, this, this is not the best example of that, but that is, in fact, a principle, a dynamic that I'm very aware of and, and uh, am not beyond, as you can see, utilizing that, em employing that little trick. Let me repeat it. What is the trick? Painting in transparent and translucent. The trick is jumping over the color temperature boundary. Like you, if your underpainting is cool, 
doing a warm glaze on top of it or warm uh, translucent uh, scumbling on top of it. Or if your underpainting is, uh, which way did I go the first time? Anyway, if your underpainting is cool, do warm on top of it. If it's warm, do cool on top of it. Now, I'm going to pick up some smaller uh, scumbling brushes. Oh, you know what? I have, all mine are all out in the, oh, here's one. This is what I'm looking for. Little one inch thing. Um, pick up some permanent rose. My, if I had to just pick one red color to use for the rest of my life, it would be permanent rose. I'm going to glaze this red car. It needs to be a little redder, a little less orange. So that's what I've just accomplished. Same thing, these taillights, a little more red, a little more red. And then after having done that, come in and lift out the light center of these taillights. Okay, oops, and I look, I need to do some down here in the, on the road too, do I? Because this is a perfect reflection of that, of course. All right, now let's tackle a few things up here near the top. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to work my way out that, that light pole, so to speak. So now I'm mixing up and this is what I do most often in the final layer. So now I'm in the final layer that is opaque highlights. I spend much of my time matching. There we go. Got it. Dead on. That's that's lucky. It's not always that easy. I'm, I'm matching in, in an opaque paint the color that's already there. Now, the color that's already there is layers and layers and layers of who knows how many combination of how many different colors. Uh, but my goal right now is to match that, those colors, that color, I should say, in a transparent hue and a transparent layer of paint. Hue is not the word. In a, and I keep saying the word transparent. In an opaque, that's right, to match that color in an opaque paint, sorry. Many times when I'm painting, my tongue gets just all tangled on top of me here. Now I'm trying to match. Can you see that that's a dull blue? I think you probably can. And let me see how close I am. Ooh, quite close. Perfect. So here, say I'm just skinny, skinifying that telephone pole. That was one of the little issues that my friends uh, discovered for me. I, uh, now, I'm going to fix this drawing issue that they so kindly pointed out for me. <laughs> they pointed it out because they were completely, some of them, a few of them, a couple of them, one of them, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. They were confused by what was going on up here. They couldn't, so if I make this a little more obvious, and that's too obvious, by the way, that, that mark out there is way too um, stiff. There we go, that's better. I'm not done here. I'm just doing a dark, dark layer, dark li lines first. And then I think if I come back and do a slight light highlight along the top of that, I think it will read better. Ah, that's too, way too stiff. But there, that's all right. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is repaint this, this roof so it reads um, a little more clearly as a single plane. I really don't want to change the color or the value much. So again, I'm just trying to match what is already there. I just want to flatten it out a little bit. see if I'm close. Yeah, 
close enough. Slightly lighter, which is fine. Slightly lighter than what was there. Do you see, can you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to indicate that this whole thing is, I don't know, there's a name for that in architecture, I'm sure, and I don't know it. Um, um, that's a little bit too bright, so I tell you what, I'm going to darken it, take a minute. I'm going to cheat here, actually, because as you know, you don't do dark paint on top, you don't do dark, opaque paint on top of light, correct? But everything that I just put up there is still, of course, completely wet. So I'm going to try to apply this new layer by mixing it in with what's already there. Not letting it appear like two layers, but just one. I'm not sure I'm accomplishing that. I'm going to mess it up, too, I'm on purpose. Soft. There we go. That's better. And the last thing I'm going to do is give this street light a little more glow. Um, again, I was a little bit mortified. Only slightly. <laughs> Is there such a thing as slightly mortified? <laughs> Hardly, because the word, the word mortified already has extremity built, built into its own definition. There's no such thing as slightly mortified. Okay, so you English majors, don't pay attention. I was not slightly mortified. I was just Mildly disturbed. <laughs> How's that? That they, somebody thought that was a moon. But if I give it more glow, I hope it'll look a little less lunar. <laughs> How about that? Less lunar. And then I think, where did I put that ballot knife? It was here just a minute ago. I've got, I've got a bunch of them, but I just thought, well, I'll use the same one, but evidently not. Okay, there we go. And I'm wondering if I put a little bit of reflection of the light on the bottom side of that. Mess it up a little bit. There, and made it less round. It's almost all perfect. Except I don't like the way the outer edge of this roof is looking. It needs a little definition. There. All right. I, th I think I think I fixed that. Now there was one other thing uh, that was a good observation. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't think that first one was a good observation. <laughs> I didn't mean to give it that much emphasis. Uh, but one of the good observations that did come forth, and this, by the way, this is why I strongly recommend belonging to a painter's group uh, where you can critique one another. Uh, one of the good ideas that somebody came up with was like, wait a minute, if, if this is all atmospheric, like you've got it, you know, rainy and atmospheric, shouldn't we see these headlights on? And of course, I made a joke about this guy's, he's riding without his lights on. It was brakes on. Anyway, no, but it was a bad joke. So, no, the fact is, um, if, if it's this dark and this rainy, we would indeed, without question, we would see uh, his headlights shining forward. And if you'll forgive me for just a minute, I need to clean up my palette again real quickly. Dum, 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 dum. Clean up with a razor, by the way. I think you know that on a glass, scraping off a glass palette. There's no such thing as a perfect palette solution. Every, every, every palette solution has its upsides and downsides. Anyway, I like, okay, so I'm mixing up warm white, tiny bit of Naples yellow. I'll zoom in for you again here. Okay, so I think I'm just going to try to put down 
a medium thick pile of paint there and pick up a dry brush and just brush it straight that way. Yeah, that didn't work as well as I had hoped, so I'm going to do it again. It's looking worse. <laughs> Fear not, we're still messing. That might, that might be it. Hang on. I'm going to do just a tiny highlight right, right at the front of the car. When in doubt, use your fingers. And now, yeah, back over to these headlights after I glazed them. I want them, I want them back to brighter again. How's that? Yeah, that might be all right. Um, this painting, at the moment, it's, it's one of those, I should take it back for another critique from my friends, because I feel like the way it is right now, it has some charming bits in it. But um, it's not a home run. Boy, that bugs me. <laughs> we all do it. We all do not home runs occasionally, by the way. I'm not going to lose any sleep. I don't mean it bugs me that much, but it does bug me a little bit. Um, a little more light coming out of these windows, perhaps, which is completely fictitious in the painting. I reserve the right to turn on lights in buildings anytime I see fit, <laughs> and I employ that right fairly often. I'm doing a dark green glaze right now to change the color of this foliage up here. And up here. Very subtle. You can hardly even see what I just did. All right. But I fixed that light, fixed the roof, fixed the pole, fixed the headlights. And now I'm just playing around. A little bit of gray, green. I don't mean gray. I mean green glaze on that windshield. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to stop there. Frankly, the painting is bothering me the more I stare at it. So this might be one of those that gets cut up into bookmarks, but I'm going to quit anyway because I don't have clear vision. I'm going to put it somewhere and look at it. All right. The last one that I'm going to tackle for, for sure this afternoon is this one, a painting that I'm quite happy with. This is a painting of Carolina, the Carolina Inn uh, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I was there about a month ago. Uh, there was a bridal show going on inside the inn. I've done three weddings here, I believe. And I called them up and way too late. I, I didn't get around to registering, but it you know, cost a couple thousand dollars to get into the show, to be a vendor in the show. And uh, so I made a real sweet deal. I said, if you'll let me come for free, I'll do a painting and give it to you. So that's, that's what I did. So I got to, you know, hand out business cards and promotional materials to all the brides. And uh, didn't pay anything, but of course, I'm giving them this painting free. And in the long run, I hope they realize that they, they're getting the way better end of this deal. But that doesn't matter. In the short run, I'm doing just fine especially if I get any weddings, which I haven't yet, but especially if I get any weddings from, from my uh, efforts. Okay, but what, so what's wrong with it? Um, I took this to my painter's group as well. Same time, I think, as I took that last one, maybe. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, I took it in the last month or two. And, uh, you know, generally they liked it, but uh, they had especially one man there whose opinion I respect very much. So 
he'll remain unnamed. So not because um, I respect all of them. But but one man in particular made a good observation. He said, more color. In fact, it was the same time that I took this painting with me. This one that was, as you can see, it was is done on aluminum. And he pointed to this one and said, see, color. This needs that. So I've been scratching my head then for the several weeks since that and saying, well, I don't know, what did he, what, what does, what does more color mean? Well, I'm going to, I'm starting with low hanging fruit, more red dress, more red on the head, on the taillights. Um, I think it's a good observation. I'm just trying to figure out how to execute it. So I've got red on my brushes still. I'm just going to go ahead and do some sort of, um, broken color. Those of you who follow me regularly, you know what I mean by that. That's a, a good, easy way to get extra color into any painting. Basically, I'm trying to match values, but different, different color, same value. Um, I'm mixing up sort of a cranberry plum, maybe. And now looking for places that I can do. That's, that's by the way, that is not broken color. That's broken value. When you have a, a stroke that is much, is darker or lighter than what's around it, that's not broken color. That's broken value. So I'm actually doing some of each right here. I don't mind doing some punching up some value as, as well as color. Okay, that, that's, I don't want to get carried away with the reds, so let's, let's clean these brushes off real quick. Start doing another. Now, again, I'm going to, low hanging fruit. I'm going to start with some easy stuff. And one of the things I, I know I can do is punch up some of the yellow golds in the dark area over here. And, um, and then punch up some of the whites. So I, th I felt when I was doing this, I felt like this area had sufficient highlights. Stay there just for a second. Let me show you something. I don't recommend doing this, but I just put some pure titanium white on my brush, which I don't recommend. I'm going to take this off in a moment. But there, that gives you, that gives me a target. I'm going to wipe that off. By the way, you'll notice I did not glaze this painting. Unlike all the others, I didn't glaze, start out by glazing the whole thing. And I, that's because I think the whole painting is all verging on too dark already. So I didn't want to darken it even more. So there you go. There's one time that I did not glaze the painting. Now I like the way it is, but I don't want the whole thing darker. That would be, you know, it's right on the edge of being too dark. Okay, so I have now here some nice rich yellow gold the concept is that these windows are reflecting something that's over here and when i was doing it i did this already one time and i thought that i was you know giving it enough but after my friends critiqued it i realized oh yeah i guess i could have pushed that a little bit pushed that a little bit harder I'm doing some, whoops, that's not the right color there. Try this. Nope. Usually when I make a sort of a mistake like that, especially last week I did this a bunch when I was teaching the class, I would say, you know, something about making a mistake and then I would say to the students, witness my distress. I've done this to you guys too. <laughs> Sorry for this stupid face, but the point is I'm not stressed out, and 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 uh, that's a good thing. I do I do know that too many times people 
especially painting art students, they berate themselves. They get all irritated at themselves. No, 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 don't even go down that road. Do like me, witness my distress <laughs> and don't be distressed because you're not done. Hey, you're just, you're still messing around. Just fix it. Do something to fix it, but don't kick yourself. And I, I know that that's what people do. I know very well that that's what people do. And so that's what I'm modeling. Don't do that. Soft, 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 soft edges over there. Um, so I've added, I like that little bit of orange right there. That was nice. Um, use some orange on the dark side of this pillar and this one. More color, more color, more color was, was the hue and cry <laughs> from, some, from some of my friends. They didn't know they were hewing or crying, but <laughs> evidently they were. <laughs> Ah, nope, that was not, not, a, not, a, not a perfect color there. Let's see, try that again. Again, witness my distress. So I just said that was not a perfect color. And I do know, I know very well that many student painters, they would follow up that, that, that sense like, oh, that wasn't the right color. They would follow up with, I'm such a terrible artist. I'm such a dummy. I'm such a screw up. I mess up. So Right, right, right. You know what I mean? That self-berating, that self-flagellation. Man, cut that out. Just, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You, everything can be fixed. It ain't over till it's over. Painting's not done till it's done. Until it's done, it's not done. So it can be fixed. I know that sounds so stupid, but it's so true. And roughly... 87% of those listening to me right now need to hear that and take that to heart. <laughs> That's a very scientific number, of course. <laughs> Whoops, my easel's at the ceiling at its current setting, so it can't go any higher than that. So I'm, I've just mixed up some pale green, similar to what was already there. Um, Somebody, one of my viewers a couple weeks ago suggested I make, like in the photograph, all of this light green. Oh my, that would be a, that would be a wrong choice. That would not be a good, that would not be a happy moment. Um, no, I'm, I'm using the, the focus of the bright green there to help very much to aid the composition and steer the, steer the eyes toward the focal point. And as I said, this is one of those perhaps a rare painting for me where both the psychological focal point and the visual focal point, you know the difference between those two? A visual focal point is comprised of a whole bunch of things. Most typically the art school definition is where the lightest and dark areas abut one another with hard edges. Remember that is a partial definition. That is not the whole story of focal point. That is just one description of a focal point. Anyway, that's, so this is the focal point. Psychological focal point is human beings, or, or if you don't have any people, like an animal, you know, a cute puppy, a cute, a cute kitten painting. The, the psychological focal point would be the cute kitten, most specifically the cute kitten's eyeballs. <sighs> um, in this case, so, but I have, especially a woman in a red dress, um, so the focal point is so clearly here. This is, there's no mystery, no mystery whatsoever about this painting. Isn't that right, Lake? Yep. <laughs> I got a hearty yep from Lake, who is a very good art critic. Okay, so let's, let's go. I'm going to take myself back now to more color, more color. I know, let's, let's go, I need to get out a couple of clean brushes. Let's go in the direction of purple. Purple's a really good um, accent color 
because you can really sneak it in a lot of places. I'm going to make this uh, an opaque pale purple, not, um, not too pale. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. When an artist says that, you know, he or she is not bragging. <laughs> you know, I'm responding to what happens. Say, ooh, that worked, that worked okay. It's not, a, it's not an arrogant statement. In fact, it's almost a surprise statement like, oh, how about that? That actually worked. And anywhere there's, that there's dark is, is a candidate for getting some of this fairly intense purple. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Okay, I'm going to shift a little bit. I'm going to add some ultramarine to it. So it's a more violet, less purple, if you will but still fairly dark. Yeah, that was nice. How about, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. I, mean, I shouldn't be, I can wipe it off, but you know. Okay, so I just added a bl blush to those shutters and it worked pretty well. I'm gonna do the same thing on that shutter and on some of these up here. I don't wanna get carried away, but it worked okay, so. <laughs> I'm going to add some more blue and a tiny bit of white, so ever so slightly lighter. And let's do some stuff. Um, I already, f I thought I was completely finished with this painting and I have already uh, photographed it and posted it in Fine Art America. <laughs> that means the changes I'm doing today, I need to photograph it again, which is not a terribly simple process. If you've watched my how to photograph paintings, um, not, not a terribly simple thing. It's a little bit involved. I would think probably on the whole 45 minutes of work to get a, from, or no, an hour to get from painting to Fine Art America the whole process, set up the garage, set up the camera, set up the easels, wait for the right time of day. You have to do that before you do any of that other stuff. And um, that's nice. This is working well. Um, and then, and then uh, after shooting, then you import the, in this case, one, two, three, four, probably at least six images, but three or four, of it, so 24 to 30 pictures, photographs. Uh, into Photoshop, and then, um, okay, I'm going to add some phthalo blue, so I'll continue around the color wheel in the same direction. So, and then you import, sitting down then, butt in chair in front of, in front of computer, and 40 minutes later you have the tiled together image, and again, you, I, you can watch me, I have YouTubes where I show you this whole process, if anybody's interested, just do a search on my channel for photographing paintings, maybe photoshopping, I don't remember. Anyway, and then, then by the time you're all done with that, then you post it on Fine Art America or on, my web, on your website or whatever. So probably an hour, just to give you some idea. So not extremely, uh, I don't want to do that redundantly. <laughs> Is that a word? I just made up another new word. Redundantly. <laughs> In a redundant manner. <laughs> you don't wonder if this man up here could be wearing a greenish suit or if this woman could be wearing a greenish ooh that was nice yeah a little green on that on that dress not bad okay let's Let's go to some blue now, lighter blue, paler blue. Uh, Cause I think I can pump up. Well, I'm just gonna go back to the blue I was using and just lighten that up and look for places. Now I've got a very mid-tone blue on my brushes, not the dark stuff I was doing a few minutes ago and, and fairly high chroma. As you know, I mean the, the whole purpose of what I'm doing right now is to 
get more color in the painting because when my friends told me it needed more color, I decided they were right. Good to have good friends. I also saw, here's a real nice cheap trick. Um, there were bushes down here. I was there in January, so I don't remember seeing any flowers, but uh, the viewers don't need to know it's January, so I'm going to put just a few flowers. Here's a real trick for doing distant flowers in a distance like that, not up close, but you do it the dark color first, of course, in dark blue in this case, uh, medium blue, and then come back and do the some pale blue highlights, of course, coming from the light word or the sunward direction makes your flowers look a lot more believable don't just do one color you must you really must do two hey here's a color i haven't really gotten into the painting much how about a aqua blue green i got that because i just mixed up a couple messes that were already on my palette. So let's see if I can find any place. That's a pretty intense color. You know, turquoise, aqua greenish stuff. Touch, just a touch on that car. Yeah, that's nice. What this man's shirt? Yeah, that'll do. A little bit in this window. <laughs> it's funny how while, while you are doing some things, it, you, you feel like you're being so bodacious, you're being so bold, brave, and then you come back the next day and look at it, and you go, oh, <laughs> that wasn't brave at all. That stroke was brave, but I think it's good. I'm going to leave it. Have you ever had that experience? You feel like you're just being so Mr. or Mrs. Bold? Dun -dun -dun, boldly going, slapping color down. Caution to the wind. Then you come back the next day and go, oh, <laughs> it's a whole lot more tame than I thought. Well, that has happened to me so many times. I do not at all consider myself a natural. I am not a natural colorist. I don't consider myself self-schmelf. I am not a natural colorist. I, I, I use bold colors because I've, because I've uncovered or discovered techniques for working with my weaknesses the, all the whole transparent layers in some way it could be construed as compensating for my lack of color boldness but it works for me people all for for all the time have have commented on my color in my paintings and they are colorful, but it's not because I'm a bold colorist. It's because I've developed techniques for looking like a colorist, even though I'm not one. Okay, so I've done purple, blue, a range of blues, done green, done red, yellow. I've pretty much covered the rainbow, the color wheel. So... Let me go now to doing some lighter, light, light highlights. Similar to what you saw me do a few minutes ago when I did just a dash of titanium white right there. Well, you know what? I can go lighter. I'll, go, I'll do it too late now. I'll come back. I could punch some lighter, some lighter stuff up there. Sorry, bouncing all over. Um, up here in the sky. That'll be a good excuse for, for some color. Um, good news is this is a better painting than it was half an hour ago. So that is very good news. Or 20 minutes, whatever it's been. All right, now, oh, sorry, got to clean off my palette again. Yeah, I'll <laughs> turn you guys so you can at least see what I'm doing here. My palette is right there. I'm going to pick up a tissue, a razor. And just wipe it off just like that. Um, you know, you can take all this paint and combine it and put it in a tube. And it's called Torrit Gray. 
and it's useful. <laughs> I have about four tubes of Torrid Gray <laughs> in my drawer, and I don't need any more. Thank you very much. So <laughs> after a while, you got all the Torrid Gray you need. <laughs> then you go back just to throwing it out again. <laughs> There. I don't, I, I don't consider that too, way, too, too, too wasteful. Well, it didn't take too much time either. So let's go back to painting. Uh, white stuff, right? Light, almost white, titanium white. And as you may know, if you follow me, um, my titanium white is always, almost always an alkyd white so it's a fast dry white so you can do some impasto impasto yeah it does come from the same word as pasta yep as you can imagine the same italian word impasto and pasta okay so i've got some really goopy built up stuff here on my brushes once again when i was painting this cup you know last month I thought I was being quite bold in my, in my highlights here. But as the weeks have passed and I've stared at this painting periodically sitting on my easel, I went, oh, you know what? <laughs> I guess I wasn't quite as bold as I thought I was. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking for a small palette knife here. Hang on, this palette has old dried paint on it. This palette knife has, has old dried paint on it. Easy fix, razor blade, good as new. There you go. It's a fairly um, sophisticated bit of woodwork up here. Um, Chippendale is the name of it. Sort of a, a complicated pattern um, that I am not going to try to reproduce faithfully. I just want to give the impression of the Chippendale um, woodwork that was done up, up here. Lots of Verticals, horizontals, boxes, and angles. better already that looks that looks much better hmm not sure about that last stroke Uh, let me describe exactly. In fact, I'm going to wipe that off. Let me tell you what was wrong with that last stroke. It's quite, quite simple. Um, it was too big of a values jump. So what I need to do is build up to that layer, uh, uh, that level of uh, lightness. Can I call it level of lightness? I need to build up to that level of lightness one step at a time. I can't go all at once. So here. 
I've got a color now uh, of paint that is closer to what's already there, lighter than what's already there. You see? And that looks okay. And now if I want to, I can mix up this color and perhaps put it on top of that. But the way I just did it a minute ago, it was too big a jump and it was quite uncomfortable. It looked like it looked like plastered on paint. It didn't look like a nice painting. It looked like a like a cheap paint job. I don't know how to describe it. Did not have a pleasant feel. Do the same thing again, mix up something slightly darker than what I've got on my brushes, but lighter than what's uh, on the on the painting right there. I guess you could say too, if you go too light all at once, it has a chalky feel. That's a good description. Chalky. I'm almost done. I don't need to do too much of this light stuff. See, it focus right there and just going up, reading out from there a little bit. Nope. Lighter than that. I think this is the right color. Yeah. You might notice that the only place in the whole painting, these are called mullions, these wooden dividers, wooden sticks between window panes. Those are called mullions. And, and there's hundreds of them in this painting. Uh, but the only place in the whole painting where they're sharp and crisp is right there. Fuzzy, fuzzier, fuzzier. Look at out here. It's so fuzzy, they're hardly even there. Same thing here. A little bit more articulate right there, but this nothing like nothing like they are right here. Of course, very intentional. Of course, you may do the same thing. <laughs> Feel free. Um, <laughs> I keep I keep be I'm right on the verge of shifting to a darker light color, and then I say, oh wait a minute, before I do that. Yeah, let me come in here and do some around these people's feet and legs. That will help unify my, again, my, my focal point and my psychological focal point. Some fairly hard uh, edged bits of light right there at the base of, of those people. Going back to a lighter color just for a minute. I feel like this post up here needs to have a little bit more light on it. <sighs> All right. I'm standing back now. I'm just trying to take a wider look little reflection on the back of the car yeah all right I'm, i think i'm going to call that quits for today oh back up to the sky remember i mentioned i could i i could get away with some lighter brighter more intense blue up here
oops, that brush was completely wet with, with liquid in it. With not liquid, with a terpenoid in it. Phew, dripping wet brush, that was a mistake. But there we go. I think I'm gonna call that, at least for today, I'm gonna to call that done. I'll continue to look at it a little bit and see if I wanna do any more to it. And I think I'll end my broadcast right there. Let's see if I've gotten any chats, just a few. Hello, Susan Zerum. Got some good comments back there on some of my previously, previous paintings. And I guess that's all, uh, that's all the chat. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. I think that's it for today, probably. And uh, I hope you'll be back tomorrow. If you like it, thumbs up it, leave a comment, share it. If you don't like it, keep that to yourself.